Hello everybody, this is John from DM Shower Thoughts, where we find our best selves through gaming. Um, Chadwick apparently has a lot of stuff he wants to play with today, including my fingers, and those are not claw resistant, so... And today what I'm going to be doing is continuing our little series here on, um on subclasses with the sorcerer so we're gonna we're gonna rank all of the sorcerer subclasses by tier so sorcerer subclasses um sorcerer is actually one of my favorite classes in terms of subclass design because um kind of like druid and ranger it has a really low number of subclasses it only has five to choose from and it hasn't really gotten any new additions in xanathar's guide to everything which is one of the reasons that Tasha's is going to be kind of exciting because, you know, we get updated subclasses for all of the classes, right? Unlike the Druid, which has strong subclasses, but overall, like, its core class design is so strong that sometimes all Druids kind of play alike. Um, or the Ranger, which lacks a core mechanical identity and really... It was it was kind of easy to tier its subclasses because some were the the later ones were stronger than the than the core ones um with sorcerer these subclasses all play very differently and uh they they're chosen at level one um and because of because of the way the subclasses are designed no two sorcerous origins um will play alike because the subclasses the subclasses encourage you as a player to build your sorcerer and choose spells in a very different way. Unlike Druid, which kind of gives just some bonus features to the Druid's action economy, sorcerer features tend to synergize with specific spells a little bit better. And because of that, you could have two sorcerers that play nothing alike because they are encouraged to use a whole different kit of spells based on their features that and they, and the features will end up expressing themselves differently. Uh, even though there's not too many sorcerer subclasses to go for, uh, they do range in kind of their effectiveness and play style. Because of the additional customizability option of meta magic. sorcerer is definitely one of the more varied classes that you can play. We're looking at this from a single class build. One of the things that I often say about Sorcerer, it's one of the, the most fun classes to play multi-classing with. If you remember the original 13 core class ranking video, uh, I gave Sorcerer an overall B ranking. Um, but, but again, we're looking at the subclass rankings in terms of a single class build, levels 1 through 20, how fun they are to play from levels 1 all the way through level 20. Just as like a quick thing, um, F tier subclass can never recommend. Um, just there's something weak about its mechanics, or something else is done better, or it somehow takes away from the core class's features, which is pretty pretty weird. But we've already gotten an example of that with Battle Rager. D tier is usually an all right concept, but it has mechanical failings that make it not recommended to play. Um, your DM, of course, can homebrew everything, but we're kind of looking rules as written. If we can get an honest assessment of how powerful the subclasses are now, now as a DM, you're a little bit, you can be a little bit more intentioned in creating custom or homebrew rules that can help some of this stuff out. And with this entry in particular, we might get a little bit into that. C tier is usually standard. It's not great, but it doesn't take away from the core class's features. Um, it just might, it might be a little boring or might not add a whole lot to how your class will play. Um, maybe that's a better way to put it is the C tier subclasses, they're not bad. They just don't really add a whole lot or they don't add a more engaging um, feel to playing the class. B tier is usually pretty good, just kind of situational. And with the right party comp and or the right campaign setting, uh, B tier subclasses might really shine. It's just that in general, there are other options that are more powerful. A tier, I have nothing really mean to say about. A tier is really solid class design. Um, they they do all their stuff pretty well. And S tier is, um, I can recommend it above all other subclasses for whatever reason. We're also gonna be doing this in release order. So just kind of keep that in mind. 
So our first subclass uh, for Sorcerer um, is going to be the Draconic Bloodline out of the Player's Handbook. And Draconic Bloodline, I give an S tier ranking. And the reason for this is in terms of general mechanical effectiveness, Draconic Bloodline not only has a very concrete mechanical identity, uh, the survivability features that it adds to the Sorcerer's Kit allow the Sorcerer to feel distinct from its cousin class, which is the Wizard. There's a whole other bag of beans we'll get into. But with Draconic Bloodline, uh, its, it's level one features are just outstanding. It has kind of a Dwarven toughness-like feature where you get to add additional hit points, which the Sorcerer as a core class has is tied for the weakest hit die in the game with the Sorcerer, or with the Wizard. With Draconic Bloodline, you also get to pick an element, which you will eventually get a damage bump to at level six, which again, allows you to really think through an elemental caster. I have seen two Draconic Bloodline Sorcerers and they play nothing alike because one goes for say fire spells, one goes for ice spells, those two spells are treated very differently in 5th edition system. You might get one sorcerer that's just blast, 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 area of effect. You have another sorcerer that's a little bit more tactical using spells like Frostbite or Ray of Frost, which do kind of different tactical stuff um, in 5th edition. When you're looking at uh, the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, the survivability boost alone is kind of worth it at first level. And as you keep going, it only gets better and better. So by 14th level, you get dragon wings and you can just kind of fly around um, freely as like a bonus action. The features and the kit, not only are dragons really cool, um, you can also really easily reflavor this to just any kind of elemental sorcerer thing, right? So, you know, you could build like an Elsa character and just be like cold draconic bloodline and it would work just as well, you know? So, not only has a strong story to go off of, we're gonna get into the other Sorcerer subclasses. They're not going to be S rank. Uh, if, if someone comes to me and they say, I wanna play a caster, I wanna see what that's like, usually if they wanna play something a little more blasty, I have them run Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, and I have them pick like Fire or Lightning or something like that. It has a very clear, concrete identity. And the Elemental Adept feat synergizes really well with the base class's design. They go like peanut butter and jelly. So, you know, I take Variant Human, take Elemental Adept at first level, take Draconic Bloodline, focus on one type of casting, and you've got a really solid class. The next one we're gonna go to is the Wild Magic Sorcerer. So Wild Magic is A tier in terms of concept, I'm ultimately giving it C tier in terms of execution. With Wild Magic, its core thing is its ability to roll on the Wild Magic Surge table, which is really fun when you get kind of a random effect built into your character. I honestly think this was done better with the Path of Wild Magic Barbarian, which is coming out in Tasha's. But Wild Magic can also be a lot of fun. The only downside is it's very DM dependent. The DM gets to choose when to call for a roll to see if you roll on the table. And the thing with that is that you only have a one in 20 chance. You have to nat one on a, on a random D20 roll to see if it goes off. And Wild Magic does get kind of stronger as you go on, but unlike the other sorcerer classes we'll see, Wild Magic doesn't really ask the sorcerer to prep specific spells that kind of go with its theme. The only one I can think of is from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, which is the only uh, sorcerer only spell in the game, Chaos Bolt. And it's really more of a thematic pick rather than necessarily like a synergistic pick, you know? So Tides of Chaos is pretty cool. But again, some of the effects are just so random, they can literally be game breaking. So one of the things on the Wild Magic Surge table is you cast Fireball on yourself that will TPK a first level party. So it's like, oh, we just spent an hour building characters. Let's open up Minds of Fandalver. Uh, as my sorcerer, I cast Burning Hands. Oh, and I fireball the party. So we're game over. <laughs> I just, it, its effects are too broad in terms of the range that they have. It, it could also, you could just turn into a potted plant and just be useless. It's one of those things, randomness can be fun. 
But in terms of execution, C tier. <laughs> the next one that we have is Storm Sorcery. And this comes from Sword Coast Adventures Guide. Uh, Storm Sorcery really kind of helps a sorcerer be stronger with lightning and thunder magic. Um, it's got a lot of neat mobility features kind of built in at first level. Um, and it gets an immunity to thunder and lightning towards uh, towards 18th. Oh, and you get a little bit more area of effect when you use lightning or thunder damage. And Storm Guide is a really nice flavor feature that can really add to the exploration pillar of play, which is something you don't really see in a lot of these casting classes. It gets a reaction where you get to push attackers away from you. My issue with Storm Sorcery is that it's so far like the besides draconic bloodline it has an element that it focuses on no other sorcerer subclasses do this so there's not like a fire sorcerer class or a cold sorcerer class you know if you're lightning you get to pick between draconic bloodline and storm sorcery the other thing is in play i've noticed that storm sorcerer is really squishy the draconic bloodline there's there's a really cool flavor there in Draconic Bloodline, you get a lot more survivability with it, uh, which allows you to stay up and stay active as a participant in combat. With Wild Magic, a lot of times you know what you're getting into. Like, when you read it, if you turn yourself into a plant or you blow yourself up, you knew that was part of picking the subclass usually. With Storm Sorcery, it could be like, oh, I get area of effect and all this mobility, and you have an armor class of 12 and four hit points, and bam, sniped out of the sky, you know? So I just think that in terms of its ability to stay an active participant, it's kind of hampered because it doesn't really have a lot of good escape tools until later on in its development. Yeah, you can cast spells like Shield, but again, it only takes one bad hit for a storm sorcerer to go down so I, I would recommend you if you pick storm sorcery know what you're getting into build your character very specifically definitely constitution uh needs to be a priority and maybe even the tough feet it's a <laughs> it, especially at lower levels it can feel kind of squishy and feel uh and that can that can make it not fun i'm gonna give it b tier i'll give it the benefit of the doubt but it's just on the surface of B tier and C tier. It's like, eh, it's suspect. Next up, we're going to Xanathar's Guide to Everything, where we get the, oh my goodness, stop attacking me. We get the Divine Soul Sorcerer. So Divine Soul is an A tier subclass. Um, I think that this is one that had brilliant concept execution. The reason it is not S tier is the raw survivability, just like with uh, with Draconic Bloodlines. However, it has this really unique feature where basically it's like, oh, do you like cleric spells? Pick some cleric spells. <laughs> like it, it opens up the cleric spell list to count as sorcerer spells. And this is the only class I'm pretty sure that does this, uh, which makes it really unique. And even though it's basically a squishy cleric, a lot of times Divine Soul has access to a lot of really cool spells and abilities that other um, subclasses, they, they just can't build that uh, with that much versatility. There are a lot of strong cleric spells on the cleric spell list, like True Resurrection. You know, Sorcerer doesn't have the full wizard spell list, and it's not a ritual caster, but it's still pretty cool to have the, the whole cleric spell list at your disposal from first level. Uh, one of the cleric, uh, one of the downsides, of course, is that Sorcerer has very low number of spells known and spells prepared that it has access to. But, you know, that's a balance point. You get all these options, but you can only know a few of them. So I think that if you're looking for customizability, if you're looking for a slightly different kind of game, Divine Soul Sorcerer is just, mwah, it's good stuff. Which brings us to Shadow Magic. And Shadow Magic, I've played Shadow Magic in a few in a few different ways. Shadow Magic is getting a B tier ranking from me. It's basically like, hey, we've heard people keep doing this thing with the Warlock and Devil's Sight. Uh, you want to try that as a sorcerer? Um, honestly, and that ability doesn't even get good until like later on, and you can only see through your own darkness. So it's like a less efficient version that doesn't come online until like level six. Whereas Warlock, you can do it by third level. 
and Warlock gets Eldritch Blast, so it's like a better version. It does have some cool stuff. Being able to get the Hound of Ill Omen and being able to Shadow Step. Again, the Shadow Step just comes kind of late. I think Shadow Sorcerer, or sorry, Shadow Magic is like a really cool idea. Again, I just don't think it's pulled off as well as uh, the Warlock version, which is you know, Darkness, Eldritch Blast from the Shadows. There are a lot of strong ways you can get the same concept, but by multi-classing it differently. So two levels of, of Warlock, whatever Warlock you want. Take Eldritch Blast, uh, take Devil's Sight and Agonizing Blast. You know, multi-class the rest with Sorcerer to get Sorcery Points and Meta Magic. You're basically getting the same kit. And the Eyes of the Dark is all right, but it doesn't see through Magical Darkness. So, all right concept, mm, B level execution. Like I said, I like the Sorcerer subclasses. They all feel like, the thing I like most about them is how different they all feel in play. In, as I'm talking it through though, in terms of raw power level, Draconic Bloodline is definitely the best. <laughs> um, followed up by Divine Soul. If you have a DM that's willing to uh, homebrew some stuff, Wild Magic and Storm Sorcery's like, only thing is its survivability. So you can build a really cool sorcerer. You just might have to talk to your DM a little bit. These are This is how I tiered uh, the sorcerer rankings. Let me know your thoughts. If you disagree with anything, feel free to argue with me. I welcome it. But, uh, but that's all for today, everybody. Play with your kittens, and remember, game responsibly. Bye-bye now.